Hey, so uh, when I'm present and clear, I already stop cause suffering to all beings. Why it's so important? Why we say the vows of why we are um, vow to save all beings? Why this is so important to have the motivation first to help all the others? Uh, you mean the first motivation of saving all beings? Yeah, um, instead of uh, because. In Theravada, for example, the motivation is uh, get out of the samsara and release ourselves from uh, causing ourselves suffering and others. So why it's so important also to have first the motivation to, to help uh, all beings and yeah. save them from suffering? Yeah, very good question. Actually, uh, the different kinds of, of Buddhism and different uh, paths and schools are, are not good, not bad. No, no tradition is better than the other. If it's, if it's done sincerely, it leads to the same mountain top, if I should use a commonly used metaphor. The, the way up there could be very different, and the tools could be also be very different. And I would say it's even a, a question of your karma, your, your character, which tradition is, uh, is more suited for you. So actually the Theravada tradition with focusing on, on uh, reaching Samadhi and reaching this one-pointed uh, meditative state where you, where you get insight to all the impermanence of the, of the existence and conditioned nature and then getting liberated and reaching nirvana which is uh, reaching this state when all karma is like disappearing like in, in the fire. It's one way of looking at it. It emphasizes your side in doing the practice which, which I also mentioned in the introduction actually. So I think the Theravada uh, point of view is, is also could be very good for, for a beginner. But later on, Theravada practice was also very strict and, and only for monks. And uh, uh, many people say about the Theravada tradition that it's Hinayana. It's, uh, they don't like it and it's no wonder. It's, it's, you know, it's a small path. And a uh, small path from the point of view that only few can walk on it really seriously, monks who really leave everything behind. And then uh, after this time when Theravada tradition, you know, when it was practiced, later on Buddhism met other cultures, there were other influences like the Chinese culture and the Taoist uh, thinking and then later, later also some Confucianist uh, thinking and uh, that led to a uh, different, wider kind of worldview. And with that, we have the Mahayana, which is the, the wide, the big way. And it can also be perceived as, as a way where many can uh, go. Not only monks, laymen and laywomen also. So, uh, and in that uh, um, tradition, and in this kind of thinking and approach to to practice, you have a, um, um, other tools. And they realize that, uh, yeah, we have not just monks, we have other interested people who also want to, want to practice Buddhism and get some insight. And if you, that's, that's the other method. If you want to uh, transcend your egoistic point of view, it's a great help when you are not self-centered. And if you just work for your liberation, if you don't understand it correctly, it could very quickly lead to you know, some kind of uh, practice for yourself, which after a time will put you in a bubble and slowly, slowly you die in that bubble. But if your mind is kept very wide, and there are all the other beings inside this view, you are never narrow-minded. So this kind of vow ensures that your practice doesn't be become something which is uh, only for yourself. 
uh, at first it's hard to to see that why should I help other beings I'm I'm myself not so well yeah that's true and work on your on your state of mind but always have that in in your in your uh, forefront in your in your head that yeah I have all the other beings here and and we have to help because you see your see the suffering and other people and and that's a that's a big motivation for instance it could be a big motivation for instance for me I've I've uh, lived through many depressive phase states and when I when I thought that well life is not so good then why should I do anything but uh, it's a waste of time when you when you just lose your energy and you sit back at home and you do nothing it's really a waste of this uh, if, of this time which you have and and when you see people who who think the same you know that life sucks and um, and it's terrible it's it's it, it really moves your heart because it's not good when someone feels that it's terrible yeah life is difficult no question in that but but you could be uh, also happy and you could could be connected to other people so that's I think a big big motivation even then when you sometimes tend to be depressive that ends it quickly because being selfish is is <laughs> is losing energy and, and in the long run it won't help your uh, your practice and your state of mind so I think this wow is is one of the most important things and it's good to to put it in your heart with one with one point uh, that you find a connection to it it's it's part of everything in the tradition yeah you have many many teachings which can which can seem abstract but then find connection to it find your your gate into that sentence which all the great teachers left to us and then then it will be also your your uh, conviction so having all the beings that's the big mirror like space like mind which we need thank you for teaching thank you for the question can you explain about a wheel of dharma and how to move it how can i help you only that not enough well enough uh, very good you are a very good student <laughs> thank you very much thank you for teaching uh, but a small addition a small commentary to that is that um, that is that's an image which was used by by the Buddha the wheel of the Dharma turn the wheel of the Dharma is to uh, do the practice and and walk on the on the path and and teach if it's if it's necessary so it's it's maybe a um, uh, sister image of of the of the life circle of the samsaric cycle which is also a kind of kind of cycle and instead of of uh, giving power and energy to that kind of cycle uh, which uh, moves around with, with suffering, with endless suffering, with desire leading to suffering, suffering leading to hate, hate leading to again desire, and all that under the uh, umbrella of ignorance. Um, that's that's what we see normally in our thinking, in in ourselves, but also in the world. We fight wars and wars create more wars and uh, and also again financial suffering and lives are lost so we see that it's it's a it's a cycle and um, if you move from this karmic cycle to to the dharmic cycle that's that's where um, suffering is is dissipated and uh, that's why i ask you how can I help you that's a uh, that's one good way of uh, of um, uh, not being aggressive and not being uh, um, 
aggressive to, to others, but uh, to be open. And that's, that will be all, something more of a dharmic cycle and not a karmic cycle. Thank you. And how do you know what is helpful for the other? I don't know. And it's good to have the don't know for that, the don't know mind, which is clear like space and clear like mirror, because in that space, everything can appear. So if you judge the other person and you have the, the helper syndrome, that's also a very bad sickness, actually. I want to help the world. I want to be the savior. I want to, to make everyone happy, even if they die during my helping. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a bad sickness. So be open. Be open to others and to all the situations which arise. And uh, use your don't know mind. So uh, look for that, uh, for, for what is needed. And, and that's why um, actually in Zen teaching you won't find real, you know, like 10 points or, or some dogmatic system that you should do that or do that. Um, be open. This openness is, is actually to me, when I get openness from a person, that's the best thing. That's, that's something like, like, you know, what we talked about, love. Very interesting point I've read somewhere from a, from some, uh, from a very, very famous psychologist who, who did much, much a long, long therapeutic career and helped a lot of people. And he spoke about one, uh, one patient who had very, very big suffering, very terrible childhood. Parents were very abusive. No one loved this, this person. And um, he was listening to this person in the therapy for many, many sittings and sessions. And after one such session, when he was just practically listening to this person, the patient went out and in the door, he turned back and said, Oh, dear, dear doctor, I, I really like to come here because here, for the first time, I feel that you love me. And then the psychologist just instinctively said, no, I don't love you. I just pay attention to you. That's my job. So uh, this, this caring attention can seem like also like love. So... That's, that's the first point. Uh, and then for, you can move from there. But, um, but that's, that's keeping don't know, keeping attention, and we will see what happens. That's the, I think, best tactic from a Zen point of view. Um, having said that, um, I'm thinking what I can do for the people, Korean people who are suffering from the war, from the Zen point of view. Uh, suffering just uh, generally or... or um, There's no uh, rules or standard. How can I help others? Then I just feel the suffering with them and just donate some money that's you know. <laughs> from the point of view, <laughs> you can donate me money. Uh, I'm very, I'm suffering. I, I, I have so much suffering. No, I'm <laughs> just joking. Um, so, no, actually, you don't really need to do big things. Of, of course, if the situation arises and you are in that position, you can do it. So, uh, I just wanted to to leave the space open for that because Zen is a is, is a not uh, um, primary school. It's, it's, uh, it's for grown-ups. And uh, if you grow up, uh, so it's, there's more responsibility on you. If I tell you something that you should help like that or that, I take your liberty away, seemingly. And seemingly take the responsibility, which is a very bad karma, for a teacher to say, you should do that. 
even if you teach just language or, or physics like I do, I mean, just, that's also a big thing. Uh, you know, just not, not uh, the dharmic realm. Uh, even there, uh, you have to give some, some liberty to the student and then uh, slowly, slowly lead them to use the language by themselves and be creative in learning and be creative with, the, with the, what you have to learn. And, and you are helping them in that regard. Uh, so when, when you see suffering, it's not, that's not an abstract thing. Usually it's not, you know, the people general and the suffering in general. You have a very concrete person before you with some kind of big or small suffering and if you are just being kind or being open, what, what I've talked about earlier, that already helps. And then let, your, let the situation evolve from there. Uh, not, dog, not dogmatically, not uh, following um, any kind of religion. It's just like something like the Dalai Lama said, uh, that uh, uh, the only, only um, religion is actually be kind to each other and to yourself, actually. That's just my, my comment. Uh, but I think he, he wouldn't disagree uh, with that statement. So, yeah, um, we can have many thinking and we can have uh, lots, of ki lots of dogmas and religions, Buddhism, Christianity, Jewish tradition, uh, Islamic tradition, all kinds of uh, tradition and cultures. And they are very beautiful. But in the end, if, if something creates more suffering, that's a hindrance, that's a problem. So don't try to be a good Buddhist or a good Zen practitioner or a good uh, helper or a good teacher. Just be, a, just be a, a good normal human being open to, to the situation. So I think that's, that's the first point in, in helping. And then, then if donating money is the right action in one situation, that's very good. If going out and giving food to some poor people, that's also very fine. Uh, just don't, don't be closed inside your, your, your own world. And that's also already good. <laughs>